Oh, they're right there, stranger. What do you want? I'm looking for work, ma'am. You look like a drifter to me. Just what kind of work would you know how to do? Well, uh, I can restore 17th century Flemish landscape paintings. I got a guy who does that. Mushy. Can you sweep? Well, I can learn. No, it takes years to learn how to sweep. What else can you do? Well, I'm strong. I can pick up a horse and squeeze the manure out of him. What good is that? I don't know, but it's fun. We don't have time for fun out here, mister. If you don't believe me, you can go ask my husband and my son. They're buried over yonder. Well, how can I talk to them if they're buried? I didn't say they was dead. They got tubes going down them so they can talk and breathe and everything. Well, I guess there's no work for me here, ma'am. Thanks anyway. Wait. Maybe there's something you can do. But it's not what some might call man's work. Well, that's all right. What is it? Well, I, I can't read. Well, neither can I. Good. Why don't you come in and watch the new show with me? I'll be proud to, ma'am. Be proud to. Good evening and welcome to The New Show. Tonight, starring Candace Bergen, Valerie Brownfield, John Candy, Terry Garr, Buck Henry, Steve Martin, Catherine O'Hara. Dennis Quaid. Randy Quaid. Gilda Radner. And Dave Thomas. With musical guests, Cindy Lauper. And The Pretenders. Burger King. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, it's exciting for me to be back here doing the new show because... Well, when I think of the new show, I think of two things. The first is a cute little production secretary named Cindy, and the second starts with an F. I'm talking about, of course, fashion. Because a lot of people come up to me and they say, Steve, hey, what kind of a guy watches the new show? Well, I think he's a fashionable kind of guy, a special guy, a guy a lot like me. <laughs> he's debonair, he's sophisticated. He knows the difference between suave and sad. <laughs> he wears his sweater tied around his neck, often with his own arms still in it. <laughs> he looks as good with one hand in his pocket as he does with two. He can look right or left or even straight ahead with no prop. He can look over his own shoulder and check out his rear end. He's a man who would rather stop and smell the roses than smell where the cat has been. He likes his sushi well done. And he can tell the difference between a fine French wine and a big stinking cow. <laughs> He's the kind of person who doesn't have to say chow because his wave says it for him. Hey. <laughs> and when someone waves to him, he responds appropriately. Who, me? <laughs> He's the kind of guy who's not afraid to wear the latest fashion 
especially if it accentuates the crotchal area. <laughs> His clothes are made from only the finest of materials. <laughs> and he has his own special walk, a walk that says, hey, I'm different. <laughs> That's right, he walks proud, but not too proud. He has a little shame, and just a tad of lust. <laughs> and that's the kind of guy who watches the new show. Hey! And now it's time for another episode of Flute Artney. Me. Why is it whenever we find a body, you show up five minutes later? I don't know. Lucky, I guess. Tell me, Zud. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's Sergeant Botnip to you, Artney. Okay, Botnip. Who's the stiff? Nesselfar. Chark Nesselfar. <laughs> yeah, he's the president of Twos Industries. Oh. Elsrit. You want to bring in Mrs. Nesselfar? <laughs> Wait outside, Clodbidge. <laughs> what do you think? Looks pretty cut and dried to me. Another rub out by the Lee Plus Lee gang. <laughs> That's too simple. I don't like it. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Nesselfar, but I wanted to ask your permission to set up a 24-hour guard for your safety. What's with the gumshoe? The name's Artney. Flute Artney. I read the papers. It's just that there's a stink that goes with you, and I don't like it in my house. <laughs> Sorry to impose while you're so upset. But before I go, does the name Rard Dutz ring a bell? <laughs> he was a friend of my husband, I believe. He disappeared on a vacation in the Amazon. What's it to you? Yeah, what are you getting at, Artney? It's just that I've been doing my homework, Zud. This is, this is not Mrs. Nestle Farb's first marriage. It seems eight years ago she was Mrs. Carpool Poynair. Flute. Are you trying to convince Sergeant Botnip here that Dutz, Ploynar, and Nesselfar are all tied up with twos? Blue Hartney, Private Eye, will return after this message from You Bet Ammonia Capsules. down now please quiet down and can we sit down now please okay come on guys let's get the show on the road here all right now we all know why we're here right yeah, yeah. yeah. Job. okay the strike is over the union signed a new contract today with a company and we all know what that means tomorrow the union members go back to work and every one of us scabs here is out of a job that's you 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 me all of us right well yeah. it's time we did something about it that's yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, what is it? Yeah, well, you know, what What gets me is every time there's a strike called, we go in, we work our butts off. For the last six weeks, we man those machines, we get the plant going, we're helping the company, we're undermining the union, and then after the strike is over, the company just throws us aside like those six weeks never happened, you know? Yeah. Right. Right? The yeah. company comes to us, they say, do you guys mind if there's hazardous chemicals on the work site? We say, no, fine. The, the company comes to us and says, do you guys mind working Christmas Eve at base pay? We say, hey, you're the boss. Right. And now look what happens. Right. He's right. Yeah, he's right. right. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but the point is, what do, we, what do we want? Well, for one thing, we need some kind of medical coverage. That's right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, how many of us here have been injured getting to work? Oh, that's right. And Neil, you got hit in the back of the head with that picket sign. That's right, 14 stitches. Wow. And now, who paid for that? Hey, I did. The company wouldn't lift a finger. Right. Never and you, that. Mike, you got hit in the chest with that brick crossing the picket line and Van Nostrum chemical. Now, who paid for that? My father-in-law had to pay for that. Yeah, you see? Oh, boy. And you, Ray? Yeah. 
You've been injured crossing more picket lines than any man in this room. <laughs> well, what do you got to say? <clears throat> well, I say the answer is more company goons! Yeah! 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 I remember back in the 30s when they were bussing me and some of the boys and to break up the GM strike, they had real goons in those days. Big mean guys with blackjacks and axe handles, not these retired cops with walkie-talkies! Yeah! 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 Younger goons! Younger goons! Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, don't you think we should do something about our image? I mean, how about just changing the name, Scab? I mean, maybe, maybe there's something negative about the name, Scab, you know? No, 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 wait a minute. I am not ashamed of the name Scab, okay? I've been a Scab all my life. My father was a Scab. His father was a Scab. His father before him was a Scab. His father before him was a slave trader and a renegade. His father before him was an indentured servant, was brought over from Ireland, killed his master, stole his personal effects. Uh, okay, Mike, Mike, uh, you don't have to give us your whole family history. I mean, okay. okay, we all agree that we want to stay Scabs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I say we all go together down to the factory, present our grievances to management, and tell them how we feel, you know. Uh, then I say each man makes an appointment to uh, come back individually and work out the best deal he can. You know, kind of every man for himself kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's agreed then. Now, one last thing. It cost uh, 60 bucks to rent the hall, and uh, well, the guy wanted the money right away, and so I need three bucks from everybody. Jimmy, you want to help me collect it? <laughs> well, forget it. Uh, hey, come on. I put all the money up myself. That is a dumb thing. You're kidding. You know, it's well, you're an idiot. We're scabs together, right? Right. Guys! Boy, this is great. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. You know, you hear all your life about places like Yosemite, and you think, oh, well, it's probably pretty nice, but this is amazing. Yeah. Hey, why don't you go ahead and get the camera out so we'll be ready? Good idea. Hurry up. I think that big waterfall is coming up. You're not going to believe this, but we forgot the camera. Oh, no, you're kidding. We left it on the kitchen table. You want to go back and get it? No, no, we're 20 miles from the motel by now. Let's just go on. You're probably right. Doggone it, no camera. Oh, honey, look. Oh, that's something, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Are you sure we forgot the camera? I'm sure, Michael. Oh, would you look at that? Pull over, honey. What a great scene. Oh, he's a big guy, isn't he? Wow, sure is. Did you check under the seat? I looked everywhere, Michael, really. A shot like that and no camera. Wait, stop! Is that lava? That's lava. That's real lava. I didn't know they had volcanoes in Yosemite. Damn! Real lava and we don't have one measly camera. Michael, slow down. You're gonna hit that man up there. Wait a minute. That's not a man. Oh, sure. You forget your camera and who do you see? Bigfoot. Look, honey, he's still there. I think he's gathering wood or something. Sure, sure he's still there. If we had a camera, he'd be running like hell. Get out of here, you big jerk. <laughs> oh, you scared him off. Look, I know you're upset about the camera, but what is that? Oh, uh, a pterodactyl. What else? I thought they were extinct. Yeah, well, normally they are, but you forget your camera, they're around like flies. Like, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Whoopee. Maybe we should just go back to the hotel. No, no, we're going to have fun, just because you forgot the camera. I forgot the camera? Yeah. What's this? I forgot the camera. You know, you... Oh, oh, Michael, pull over. I think that woman needs help. Hi, I'm Jackie Onassis. And I'm feeling kind of drunk or insane or something, and I was wondering if you'd like me to pose with you for photos. You know damn well we forgot our camera. Now buzz off! I hate it when people do stuff like that. 
Oh, I suppose now you'll want to stop and see the flying saucer land. Let's just go home. No, we're going to stop. There. with those guys. You want to stop and have a picnic? Yeah, sure. There's a nice place over there. Where? Over there, where that angel is sword fighting with Hitler. Oh yeah, I see it. Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Lauper. Buck Henry. Thank you. And I'm Dave Thomas. And welcome to Weekend Tonight. You know, Dave. Yes, Buck. Continuing with our coverage of the Academy Award nominees, I'd say that the unusual thing about this year is that four out of the five nominees for Best Actor are not Americans. Yes, Buck's right. Tom Courtney, Albert Finney, Tom Condy, and Michael Caine are all English, while Robert Duvall is the only American. Those English actors really seem to have an edge on us, Buck. They just might, Dave. But fortunately, one of these fine British performers is passing on his expertise to a younger generation of Americans. And Weekend Tonight paid a visit to see just how he does it. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely play us. They've got their exits and their entrances. And one man, in his time, plays many parts is that being seven ages. At first, he's the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. We're here then in the, the American School, School of Dramatic Acting, listening to a class conducted by the eminent like actor snail, and Academy Award nominee, Mr. Michael Caine. So Let's listen in for a moment, shall we? And see if we can all learn something about how to act. <laughs> then the lover, sign like a furnace, <laughs> with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you, but I find it incredibly hot in here. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, one of the most important things for an actor is, of course, enunciation. One day, one of you may be lucky enough to be in this play, A Streetcar Named Desire. Perhaps you'll play the role of Blanche Dubois. So it might be helpful now for me to go over with you one of her famous speeches, beat by beat. I'll say it and then you repeat it after me. And when I die... And when I die... I'm going to die on a sea. I'm going to die on a sea. You know what I'll die of? You know what I'll die of? I shall die of eating an unwashed grape. I shall die of eating an unwashed grape. No, great. Great. One more time, great. 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 One of the most difficult things that a young actress might uh, be asked to do is, of course, the love scene. And tomorrow, we'll commence with our kissing workshop. I look forward to it. I'll see you then. Oh, does anybody want to ride? Uh, Mr. Kane, I... 
This is Buck Henry for Weekend Tonight. Last Sunday night, Ronald Reagan announced that he would seek re-election. And he started his campaign this very evening by giving an inspirational address to all the important people in Washington. Well, here are the photographs I promised you of myself, Tip. Now, I'll get the projector and turn the lights down. Whenever you're ready with the film, you'll cue me. Is that all right? Well, that'll be just fine. Uh, hello, sir. Please excuse my palms there. Clammy. I like clammy palms. Well, I hope they like the movie. Wave your hand, sir. Hi, everyone. Uh, some days when life seems hard and we reach out for values to sustain us or a friend to help us, we find a person who reminds us what it means to be Americans. And of course, I'm talking about myself, so please watch the big TV screen. <laughs> Remember the old P-40s? Well, I was flying around in one of them, just having a happy day, when uh, suddenly I spotted something. Well, it looked awful small, but then again, it was far away. Uh, was it one of ours or one of theirs? Oh, well, no matter. Either way, it had no right to be flying there with me. This was World War II, don't forget. So I tipped into a tight barrel roll, sped up to 470 miles an hour in a 9G power dive, and decided to take her out. Theirs, ours, friend or foe, one man and only one man was going to walk away from this. kind of exhilarating to, to watch him fall from the sky. And I had this sickening thought. Well, it could have been me. Oh, well, it wasn't. Uh, well, the lesson is, I think, to always look out for number one. Well, spring is here, and that can mean only one thing. <laughs> That's right, Buck. It means that hordes of drunken, obnoxious college students will be descending upon Fort Lauderdale, Florida, bothering the, bothering the local residents and injuring themselves in the process. And here, according to the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, are the five most common causes of injury suffered by students on spring break. <laughs> But we at Weekend Tonight don't want to leave the impression that all college students are rowdies. It's actually a very small group of troublemakers who give the rest a bad name. Well, the results are in. And here are this week's top five bad apples who give all college kids a bad name. <laughs> for Dave Odenthal, Dave. Boy, he must be trouble. Yeah. Well, frivolity, levity, and hilarity, that can only mean one thing, the shuttle. You're right, Dave. You know, there was a regular laugh riot last week when the crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger played the first practical joke in outer space. And for those of you who missed it, here's exactly what happened. The whole thing started when Bruce McCandless completed his spacewalk and everyone else decided to have a little fun at his expense. McCandless uh, requesting disengage airlock to report Challenger. McCandless out. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that name. <laughs> uh, come on, guys. That's not funny. Uh, What's the best word? Uh, requesting disengage airlock. Uh, Houston Control, this is McCandless. Uh, they won't let me back in the Challenger route. <laughs> marks the 40th year in show business of perhaps our country's finest pianist. Can you guess who that is? Well, I think I can, Buck. 
It can only be one man celebrated for his personal lifestyle as well as his piano artistry. And I'm talking, of course, about Lee Liberace. Which brings us to a brand new feature on Weekend Tonight, Closets of the Stars. <laughs> uh, we found uh, my old friend at home in California getting ready for his big April date at New York's Radio City Music Hall where thousands will thrill to his musical innovations. We're standing in the fabulous bedroom of the extraordinary home of the incredible Lee Liberace. How are you, Lee? I'm fine, Buck, and it's wonderful to have you here. And your viewers, too. Hello, folks. I think it can be safely said that you are and always have been a sartorial inspiration to millions. <laughs> well, thank you, Buck. I must say, you dress elegantly but conservatively, and you might benefit from a little of the flash that I've worn in the past. Perhaps we could take a tour of my closet and see. I think we'd love that. All right. Oh, Burr! Freezing in there. Winter time. Winter storage time. We need closet coats. Bruno, closet coats, please. Oh, I, I'm all right. It's just a scarf. Something flashy for Buck. Uh. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Bruno. <laughs> I feel like uh, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Sorry. King Elizabeth. <laughs> As you can see, I have a staff working 24 hours a day repairing and updating all my wardrobe. This is extraordinary. Yes, isn't it? Let me take you on a little tour. There are over 200,000 costumes here. 200,000? That's right. And how many do you take with you when you travel? All of them. Pack them up in 18-wheelers and roll. <laughs> Who are these gentlemen? These are my elves. They're constantly working. Hello, boys. Well, they're just Preparing, charming. Stitching everything, getting it all ready, refurbishing things for me. You it's know. amazing. Yes. I feel somehow changed. Well, Buck, you know what they say. Once you cross over the sequin divide into tinsel territory, you never go back. Never? Never. <laughs> now, let's see what we can find you. Something in a sequin, I think. This way. This way. Well, okay. Let me ask you this. Is there anything you have yet to do in your life that you haven't accomplished that you look forward to? Well, I... I certainly have enjoyed every little bit of my life, Buck. I have, I have no regrets. I look back over it all, and it's just a, a sea of shimmering experience with occasional glitter patches here and there. It's a beautiful metaphor. This has been a remarkable afternoon for me, and I hope for all of you. Here at Lee Liberace's home, in his bedroom, in his closet, back out of his closet, into his bedroom again. I'm Buck Henry for Weekend Tonight. And we hope that you'll be right here joining us next time on Weekend Tonight. Until then, good night, everybody. Good night. It's a brand new party when George McGovern holds Saturday Night Live. I need the money. So, how are you doing? Fine. You look beautiful today. Don't say that. It just makes me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. It's just that you're doing very well. This is the first time we've been able to meet without your getting upset. Jennifer drew this picture in her class. She wanted me to give it to you. Cut! Bobby, what are you yelling cut for? I'm the director here. Those two ashes, they keep staring in the lens. What? <laughs> what are the names? Mm -hmm. Those two, what are their names? Stu and Joanne. Stu and Joanne. Okay, Stu? Stu and yes. Joanne? Yes. yes. Uh, would you do us a big favor, please? Do not look into the lens of the camera, all right? Oh, don't look into the lens. That's right. Please. Well, okay, we'll get it both ways then. This time we won't look. Good. Can all I right. ask you a question, please? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, could I ask you, uh, what is our motivation? <laughs> we don't care, you're just extras. Well, you gotta give us something. I mean, what, what, are, what are we? I mean, just... Oh. <laughs> okay, you're a couple... And you're on your first date. Oh, all right? Great. Okay, Dick Donnie, you okay? Fine. Let's get it going. All right, fine. Okay, roll sound. Hey! Slide it. <laughs> Cloak <laughs> free, restaurant master, take two. And action, please. So, how are you doing? Fine. You look beautiful today. Don't say that. It just makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? I said you're on your first date. Well, we figured it was an 80s couple. Okay, just drink your iced tea, please, all right? Just, uh...
Drink your iced tea and, oh. and, and, and we'll, well do it again. My ice is almost melted. My ice is completely... Should I tell props? Props! <laughs> I need to play Forget it, forget yeah, it, forget yeah. it. It oh. doesn't read, okay? It doesn't read. Never mind, props. Thank you so much. Thank All right. <laughs> let's, just, let's just do it again. How are you doing? Okay. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, everybody, we'll take this again. Roll sound. Hey! Slide it. Close three. Restaurant master, take three. And action. So, how are you doing? Fine. Cut! Oh, I don't believe this! I'm losing it. The lines are starting to mean nothing to me. Okay, uh, could we get two people who look like them instead of them? Can we no. can we lose them? No, we can't lose them. Continuity, they're prominently establishing shot. Okay, uh, 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 all right. Uh, Stu and Joanne? Yes. Yes. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you two just do what the other extras are doing, all right? We can't do what all the other extras are doing. I can do what one of the extras is doing. I can do it. I have mime training. Oh, how nice. All right. Uh, then why don't you do what he's doing? And what, Joanne, Joanne. Joanne, yes, you do what she's doing, all right? What are you doing? Uh, just drinking a cup of coffee. I don't have a cup of coffee. Prof! I need a coffee! Get her a cup of coffee, all right? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Dick and Thank Donna, you. you hanging in there? Barely. I can't believe this is taking so long. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. All right. Uh, okay, let's do it. Roll sound. Hey! Fight it. Clove free. Restaurant master, take four. And action. So, how are you doing? Fine. You look beautiful today. Don't say that. It just makes me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. It's just that you're doing very well. This is the first time we've been able to meet without your getting upset. Oh. Jennifer drew this picture in her class today. <laughs> woman talking to me while I'm doing the scene? She forgot her line. I thought you could clean up the sound in post-production. I did not forget my line. I was making a dramatic pause. Oh, okay. You're the star. I guess that's how it happened. <laughs> okay, look. We're gonna do this one more time. I want you two to do something. I want you to not call attention to yourselves. Do you understand? Don't call attention to ourselves. That's right. Okay. okay. You're the director. Okay. <laughs> Dick and Donna, we'll do this one more time and we'll get it. Okay? I promise you that. All right. Roll sound. Hey. Slide it. Close three. Restaurant master, take five. And action. So, how are you doing? Fine. You look beautiful today. Don't say that. It makes me so... Cut! Continuity, I think there should be more iced tea in this glass. <laughs> Don't ever yell cut on my set. I'm the director here. I'm the guy who yells cut. Don't ever yell cut on my set. Why not? The cameraman yelled cut when we were staring into the lens. You're not the only one. You are extras. You're just an extra, <laughs> don't you? You do what you're told. Do you understand that? Okay. I don't think you can talk to us this way. What do you think extras are? Just pieces of furniture? Maybe you think we're decorations hanging on the wall? Well, we're not. We're living, breathing, extremely talented actors who are creating life in this scene. And if you don't understand that we're just trying to make this the best production possible, then we're walking. Fine. So I would be like a bachelor who came in alone. <laughs> not expecting to meet anybody, but maybe... Okay, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. You might we'll come back again tomorrow. There's a hot day. I don't know. <laughs> Mental telepathy. I think I'll give it a try. Uh... Hey, you! Oh. Hey, you! Can you hear me? I'm speaking to you by means of mental telepathy. I know you're listening. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh! I knew it. I knew I could communicate telepathically with you. How did you do it? Did, did you read the book, too? No. I was struck by lightning when I was a girl. Why don't you come over here and let me see that book? Mmm. Mental telepathy sure is a great way to meet girls.
Hi. My name is Daryl. Here's the book. Would you mind staring at someone else, please? <laughs> hey, you want to hold it down? This is a library. <laughs> Lady, you can't mail a package like this. Well, please, I'm in a hurry. I don't care. Look at this. It's got no return address, no zip code. Come on, let's let's do well, this I've right. Well, I mailed packages like this before. <sighs> Not from this post office, you haven't. Just wait here one minute. Hey, Chick. Yo. We got a lady here just begging for the good mailman, bad mailman routine. You know what I mean? Bring her back. Okay. <laughs> Yo. You want to fill in for me here for a moment? Okay, Phil. Uh, Ma'am, could you step back here, please? Oh, right back, back yeah. there? Yeah, right back here. Come on, dear. Okay. Let's take a look at okay. you. Well, let's go. All through right. this door here, ma'am. Okay. okay, right through here. Come on. Yeah. Hi there. Sit down right here. Hello. It's a nice package you got there. Oh. You uh, wrap that yourself? Yes. Very nice. Do you realize the course is officially wrapped on you? Huh? What the hell's the return address on this? Where is it? Do you see it? No, don't you? You don't see it, do you? Because it isn't there. Okay, come on, come on. Calm down, calm down. Who are you? Calm down. Here, come here. Sit down. Come on. Listen. My partner's got a temper, okay? Sometimes we worry about him. Now, all he wants to know is why don't you have a name and address in the upper left-hand corner of the package? Come on. It was a surprise. What was a surprise? The package. I didn't want my sister to know who it was from. Oh, you didn't, did you? You didn't want your sister to know, did you? Huh? You didn't want her to know. What are you doing? Fool around with postal service? How? What are we supposed to be? Guessing games here? We don't go for that stuff around here. Don't you hit me. Don't you. Do you want a little bit of the old hit the box routine, huh? No, we don't go for that stuff around here. Do you want a piece of this action, Mike? No, come on, now, come on. <laughs> You like bouncing like that? Here, right? here, here, come on, Don't sit down. Hit me again. Let her sit down. Come here. Let her sit down. Cool off, man. Just cool off. Give me one piece of it. No. Come on. The head. Come on, don't. Now listen, honey. I'm your friend, okay? You're just gonna open up, right? Just keep him away from me. Listen, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> drink of water. Would you like some water? No, oh, not of our water. Okay. She doesn't drink our water. All right, all right, all right. Come on, just cool off, will you, chick? Now, listen, think about it. If your sister were sending a package to you, she'd put a return address on it, right? Now, you think she'd hold out on you? No! All right. I don't know. I don't know. Well, listen, not, we, we can't sure. force you to cooperate with us, but if you were to just, uh, what? Hello? What's this that you had on your pocket oh, there? What is it? What, Let me what? see. It looks to me oh, like a chain letter. what are we hiding here, huh? <laughs> A little chain letter here, huh? Okay, I think party time's over, lady. Party time is over! Now! You want to complain? Because it's your word against ours. He planted that letter on oh, me. Oh, he did, did he? He planted it! Is that what you think? He planted it? Well, who's the postmaster general going to believe? Uh, you? All right, come all on. All right. Look, hey, let her go. Come on, look. I can fix that package so that it conforms to postal regulations, okay? And we can forget about your little chain letter. Oh, come on. Come on. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take the package home and start over. All right, you do that. Now listen, see, we're not such bad people. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Here's a free sample of detergent that wasn't supposed to come in the mail until next week. I'm going to give it to you now. Oh, that's all right. I can wait till next week. Thank you, pardon. Oh, okay, fine. Yes. Listen, I hope you'll work with us in the future and not against us, and uh, we may call on you sometime to uh, inform on some of your neighbors. Yes, thank you. Okay. Bye. Sorry. Hey, what are you crying for? Oh, geez. I hate playing the bad guy all the time. Oh, she was a sweetheart. I didn't want to throw her around like that. Don't be a big baby. Ah, well, you know. Go work for Federal Express. Now, come on. We got, to, we got to go sell some stamps. Let's go. Hey, you're right. Come on. I'm sorry. I don't know what got over here. Gilda Radner. And Lois, 
the postal workers. Come on out here. Valerie Bromfield. Hey! Good work, all of you. But you know, the preceding scene was in no way meant to slight the post office or criticize its employees, right, Gilda? Yes, Dave. The U.S. Postal Service moves over 90 billion pieces of mail a year in a smart and orderly fashion. That's right, Gilda. You're looking good, U.S. Postal Service. Real good. Coming up next on Nightcast, criticism from liberal and moderate Republicans that the party platform is just too conservative. Jack Williams will report on preparations for the grand old party's big party. New accusations about Geraldine Ferraro's in-laws. And a long Patriots injury list. All the news, weather, sports, and the lottery numbers next on Nightcast. <laughs> You must be the new school.